Good afternoon all. Uh, we're having some quite nice weather at the moment, so it's garden solar light time. However, this one has stopped working. I cover the solar panel, nothing's happening. Why is that, I wonder? Let's have a look in here. Yes, I think it's probably fairly obvious why that's not working. So let's take this apart. We've got three screws here because I'm going to perform a downgrade on this solar light. Yes, a downgrade, not an upgrade. I'm not gonna replace this battery. Well, I'm gonna replace it, but I'm gonna replace it with a super capacitor. Um, this one, which is 2.7 volts, 10 farads. Now, what's this piece of poly polythene here? It's not exactly going to do much in terms of weatherproofing. So we have a nice circuit here. Um, there's probably a little chip on the other side of that. No, there's no chip on the other side of that. Just the LED and some markings, which could help me to uh, draw the schematic of that if I felt so inclined. But no, that's a nice simple one, isn't it? Um, three, three pin devices there, plus an inductor, a diode, capacitor, resistor, yeah, nice and simple that. I like that. Um, okay, so let's get this battery out. Yuck. So this is nickel metal hydride, um, 600 milliamp hours, 1.2 volts, double A. Now the wires that go to the battery are this black one. So let's snip that off. And I might attach a battery just temporarily to make sure the LED comes on. And I'm gonna snip off the positive and I'm going to poke both of those through that hole so that they appear in the battery compartment on the other side. Uh, yeah, the black one is there. Um, because I'm going to put my supercapacitor in that battery compartment like so. Um, so let's just check whether it works with uh, a nickel metal hydride battery. Well, not that one, one that I know works. Right, I've got uh, a battery spanning those wires, but it doesn't appear to be working because I can't get that covering the solar panel. I can't get that to light up. Why is that? Now I'm going to have to fix this as well as downgrade it. Now I can see on this circuit that uh, positive, the white wire, runs along that tiny track uh, along the edge there through the inductor and into a copper area which is onto the positive of the LED. That would be the anode, wouldn't it? Um, then the negative is all sort of common here on the other side of the LED. So if I treat that inductor as a piece of wire and I use a three volt cell, I should be able to put negative to negative, dab positive onto uh, that side of the LED and light it up and it's not lighting up. So I suspect that the LED is faulty, let's replace it. I wasn't thinking that the LED would have failed, so that's caught me by surprise a bit. But let's unsolder it from this board and, uh, well, test it. Right, I've got the wrong bit on here, really. I've got a chisel bit on it, but it'll have to do, otherwise I have to wait for it to cool down um, before I can fit another bit. Now, will that come out? Or has someone done... Oh, I see. I think the LED had became so corroded. Uh, there, you can see the other leg, the one I wasn't soldering, has just fallen out. So actually, maybe if I just um, cut the legs a little bit shorter, poke them back through those two holes, we should be okay. I just need to remember uh, where pos and neg are, anode and cathode. Should be able to work that out. Right, I've just removed these two, well, they look like they're sort of heat um, protective covers from the LED leg and it's totally corroded and rusted. So I think I will replace uh, this LED completely because it's gone nasty. Right, let's put a nice big five millimeter one in there. Um, I don't know whether it's, there's any point re putting these pieces back on. Oh, well, let's just see whether they'll fit. Yeah, they will actually. Okay, let's put it in with those on, just to act as standoff so that I know the height to set it at. I've decided I am going to have to change this tip, so I'm just cooling it down. 
it's at 73 by rolling it on the sponge to sort of uh, let the heat transfer into the water what's that at now 60 is that cold enough to touch yeah that's fine yeah so i think i'm going to go for this fine tip one because it's just quite a small area i'm working on the big sort of du double chisel wedge thing whatever it's called wasn't working very well good right let's uh, warm that one up up it goes and of course now i'm using my new uh, 20 volt or 18 volt lithium power pack so it warms up really quick right i think the only way this is going to work is with the sucker so let's sucker it yeah that one has an exposed hole sucker this one Ah, well that one has an exposed bit of old rusty leg. Hmm, this is proving... That's still hot, I don't need that hot. This is proving very obstinate getting the rust out of this hole. That uh, paper clip won't fit through there. So the hole is impacted with rust. I think I've got the main part of the spike out, which is there, but um, I can't get this hole clear. I might even have to drill it. Right, well I've been fighting with this trying to unblock that hole, and I think I've done it, but in the process all these stranded wires have just fallen off. I don't like these stranded wires on this type of board, because every time you flex the cable you just know that another strand has broken and that they're eventually going to fall off. But anyway, I think we're there. I can now fit my LED. But uh, fortunately I now have a soldering iron which is really easy to use so the soldering of the new LED is an absolute pleasure good so these wires um, have sort of corroded and they're just not really taking solder now I could shorten them but then they'll be too short so I think perhaps the best thing would be to replace these with something that's not so oxidized and corroded that I can't actually tin it. I thought I had some wire somewhere, but uh, can I find it? No, I can't. So I'm going to cut the red and black off this um, nine-way JST. I probably won't need that. And in fact, those other wires, in fact, I, I suppose I could use the uh, silly colors in here, couldn't I? Because we don't really care. In fact, let's use the colors that um, and I'll keep the red and black for something else. Let's use the colours that they were using, which was white for positive, and I think it was purple or blue. Let's use blue for negative. That'll do. Right, battery positive white. Let's put that on there. Everything freshly tinned, and I've even put a new pad on the copper here. Well, I've scraped an area of the copper. Most of that green solder resist had come away due to some chemical process with the battery, I think. Uh, right, those are my two wires. Let's see if the LED works. And obviously no solar panel on this at the moment because all the wires fell off. So the circuit thinks it's dark. And yeah, that works perfectly well with this 1.2 volt uh, nickel metal hydride. So now what I'm going to do is solder the supercapacitor onto the end of these two wires inside the battery compartment of the solar light and then we're ready to reattach the solar panel. It's amazing how difficult it is to budge old solder that's kind of got corroded. It's either that or because it's um, lead free solder and it's just hard to mix nice fresh new leaded solder. There's all bits of strands of the old stranded wire in there. So I want to get all that out and put a fresh new blob of good old-fashioned lead solder on there so I can attach the wires onto that fresh solder. Right, screw this board in again, hopefully for the last time. Where's that screw? There it is. In you go. And now I've got my brand new LED poking up into the little uh, light chamber here with the little I don't know, plastic cover thing. 
whatever's that it's for. Oh, dispersion, I suppose. Yeah, dispersing the light out into this sort of domey thing, which has gone all cloudy yellow. But never mind that. Right, let's get these wires through uh, into the battery compartment and get the supercapacitor soldered onto there. Right, so I think I'll cut the uh, legs of this supercapacitor down. Plus and minus are clearly marked. Probably best not to short them together while I'm doing this in case there's any charge in there. There almost certainly isn't because these things, generally speaking, are fully discharged by the time they get to us. Uh, okay, so I'm going to cut these as short as I can so that, uh, but so that I can still put uh, heat shrink sleeving on there and start soldering. Right, I've got some bits of heat shrink pre-cut to 12 millimeters. These were for the solar charge controllers, but uh, they will come in very handy for this project. Uh, just tin the legs of the capacitor so I can solder the wires on. Get everything soldered. I've tinned the those two leads poking through. Just wanted to leave a bit of excess of solder on there actually and it's just not adhering. Stick. There we are. And then I shouldn't need any solder when I come to um, stick that onto there. I can just use the existing solder that's there. Alright, this is quite tricky. Let's get the negative on. That looks like a pretty reasonable joint. Let's get the positive on. Oh yeah, that turned out better than I thought it was going to. Because there wasn't much pre-tinning on there. Uh, good, okay, so I'll bring the heat shrink up and heat shrink it. Yeah, working with these very short lengths of wire is a bit tricky, but let's get that heat shrunk. Ouch, that's pointing at my fingers. And from the other side, if I can do that. No, that's probably enough before everything gets... Ouch! And to, uh, <laughs> before everything gets so hot I can't hold it. Right, so the supercapacitor is in the battery compartment. I'm trying to find the compartment cover, there it is. So that can go on there, that's finished really. Now I just need to solder the solar panel on there. There is actually a bit of sun on my desk so I can get that charged up. Um, I'll go for these two wires again I think. Actually these wires on the solar panel still seem to be intact. Let's see if I can tin them. See if they'll take solder. It just doesn't seem to want to take solder very well. And I just assume it's... Now I'm going to have to replace these wires as well because they just won't take solder. So now I've got to get these hot and it's difficult to get sort of oxidised corroded solder hot. I presume solder oxidises and corrodes. It's got something on the surface of it. It's difficult to get it hot to sort of get that off. It's just something covering it and you can't get the heat through. It's difficult. And the final uh, connections, which is panel positive to here, or S plus as it says on the circuit board, panel negative to there, S minus. Um, right, that's it. So now can I charge the supercapacitor with this panel? Uh, we've got four cells here, so around about two volts across here. We're not going to get the full 2.7. I must do a calculation actually to see how much energy this capacitor will hold. But let's put it in the, mm, well I say sun, the sun's gone in. Put it in just the light for a while, see if we can charge that capacitor up. Right, some sun on my desk. I just want to see if I can see what the capacitor voltage is. That's going up. But it's only 140 millivolts at the moment. So that's probably not going to do anything. It's going quite slowly, isn't it? But it is charging, that's good. So what I want to do is get that up to, well, I don't know, a volt or so. So I'll just leave that for a while in this sun. Let's hope the sun stays out. Right, this is up to 1.2 volts. The supercapacitor is up to 1.2 volts. Now I'm not sure quite how that high that will go. We've got four cells, but we've also got a Schottky diode. Now the cells probably do go a bit above 0.5. So let's say that uh, with the Schottky diode 
in included it will go to two volts um, I could leave it and just check that but let's just see if it's working uh, so here it is let's take it out of the Sun see if the LED comes on yeah there it is LED comes on so that's fine at that voltage there's a bit of analog effect on the solar panel there but yeah that works the question is how long is it going to run for after dark my guess is not very long and uh, now the supercapacitor has got to 1.5 volts which is probably about as high as the nickel metal hydride could ever get uh, and of course the supercapacitor can go significantly higher so I'll let it carry on Right, so this has got to about 1.7 volts. There is some sort of hazy sun on the panel, but it doesn't seem to want to go any higher. So I think that's probably about it, 1.7 volts, which is 2 volts from the solar cells, minus about 0.3 uh, of the shocky diode. So there it is. Um, we've got uh, the solar panel charging the uh, supercapacitor, which is in there. This thing, um, 10 farads, 2.7 volts. I mean, it all works, but that's not very bright. And I don't think that's going to run for very long. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that only gave us about 10 minutes. But uh, yeah, I think in terms of um, a supercapacitor downgrade, that's a success. Right, so let's uh, refit the three screws under here. And yeah, I mean, that's still glowing dimly, which is what they do on these things. I've managed to get the solar panel back in its little uh, position there. So yeah, that looks good. And as I say, I think, you know, the runtime is going to be uh, suitably short with that supercapacitor in there. So yeah, I think this is very, very successfully reduced the uh, on time of this LED from probably several hours to well just a few minutes so uh, yeah there we are the garden solar light supercapacitor downgrade result cheerio